Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to talk about acids and bases and the corresponding reactions that those undergo. There are two types of acid-base reactions. The first and most prevalent one, the one we're, that we're going to focus on most, is the Bronsted-Lowry acid-base reaction and there's also the Lewis acid-base reaction. Let's give a quick overview of the Lewis acid-base reaction. This actually is a little bit more broad of a definition than the Bronsted-Lowry um, and after we discuss that, we'll talk about how that relates to the Bronsted-Lowry reaction. So for Lewis acids, Lewis acids accept electrons and Lewis bases donate electrons. So let's look an at an example reaction where we've got a couple starting materials. So let's say we've got the fluoride anion. And that has a negative charge because it has eight electrons, fluorine wants seven. And that's going to react with a trifluoroboron compound. So we've got three fluorines attached. So these are going to react together and give us our final product. So looking at the um, specific definition of a Lewis acid. A Lewis acid accepts electrons and a Lewis base donates electrons. So in this case, since this fluoride anion has a negative charge on it, that's probably what's most likely to donate electrons in this case. In this case, boron is not charged. That is going to be our electron acceptor. So in this case, this will be our Lewis acid. So looking at the mechanism for this, we talked about bases donating electrons, so we're essentially going to draw an arrow showing that two electrons from this fluoride anion are going to attack the Lewis acid. So I'm going to show these electrons moving to and attacking and forming a bond with boron, which is our Lewis acid and our electron acceptor. So in this case, the final product is going to be boron with four fluorines attached to it. All right, let's look at the electrons for a second. So in this case, I've not actually drawn the product appropriately. So when we have our starting materials here, the fluoride anion has a negative charge on it. It donated electrons to boron. Boron was originally neutral. Now that it gained electrons, it has more electrons than it did when it was neutral. Now boron has the negative charge. This fluorine here is now here. So fluorine did have a negative charge. It had eight electrons around it, two, four, six, eight. Now fluorine used one of those lo lone pair of electrons to form a covalent bond. So it's sharing those two electrons now with boron. So fluorine still has three lone pairs. So six electrons there. Now that it's sharing these two electrons, it counts as having one electron from that bond, so that bond is essentially split. So now fluorine has a total of seven electrons, making fluorine neutral. For the rest of the video, we're going to focus on Bronsted-Lowry acid-base reactions. For Bronsted-Lowry acid-base reactions, it's always the acid that's donating a proton. So that means that we always are going to have a hydrogen atom attached to the acid bases are going to accept that proton. So the electrons within the base are going to accept the proton that the acid donates. Let's draw a Bronsted-Lowry acid-base reaction showing that bases are going to use their electrons to attack and steal hydrogen ions on the acid. I'm going to draw a couple compounds and we'll figure out first which one is the acid and which one is the base. So this compound here is ethanol and let's say we're going to react that with hydrochloric acid. All right, this is interesting because we actually have a proton on both of our starting materials. So ethanol has a proton that could theoretically be donated, and hydrochloric acid has a proton that could theoretically be donated. In this case, it's good to think about the pKa values of those protons. Um, there are several tables available online or within your textbook that show pKa values of various protons. Ethanol is very similar to water. The conjugate base of this compound means that the oxygen would have a negative charge on it. 
Um, and the pKa of this is 15.9. So let's look at the p. Let's write these pKa values down. So pKa values. This one is 15.9, and hydrochloric acid's pKa value is negative seven. In general, the lower the pKa value is, the more acidic it is. Hydrochloric acid is clearly the stronger acid in this case. And again, the lower the pKa value, the stronger the acid is, the more likely that the proton will be donated. So the proton on ethanol is less likely to be donated than the proton on hydrochloric acid. So now we know that this is the acid. So hydrochloric acid is the acid in this reaction. So that means it is going to donate its proton. In this case, ethanol is going to act as our base. It is going to accept the proton. Now, based on this definition here, this actually helps guide you with mechanisms a little bit better. So thinking about mechanism, bases use their electrons to attack and steal hydrogen ions on the acid. So this alcohol group is going to use a lone pair set of electrons available on this compound. So this is what is going to attack the hydrogen on the acid. So these electrons are going to attack and form a bond with the hydrogen on the acid, which means that these electrons need to go somewhere. So we are definitely not taking hydrogen with its electrons. We're just taking the hydrogen ion. So these electrons which are bonding the chlorine to the hydrogen are going to go sit on the what will be conjugate base. So that means once we do this proton transfer, now one of our lone pairs of electrons is no longer on our ethanol. We still have this oxygen-hydrogen bond, which I drew right here. We gained another oxygen-hydrogen bond, so we use this lone pair of electrons to form a bond with the hydrogen. So now we have one more bond between the oxygen and hydrogen. Overall, this oxygen lost electrons. So with this bond, this counts as one electron. That bond counts as another. So we've got two, three, four, five, six with the lone pairs. When oxygen has six electrons, it's neutral. Now oxygen has one, two, three with the bonds, four, five, including the lone pair of electrons. So this oxygen has a positive charge on it. We also formed another compound, specifically the chloride anion. So again, chlorine gained electrons from this hydrogen-chlorine bond. So chlorine now has four pairs of electrons, and it has a negative charge. We've got our products down. Now let's think about the equilibrium balance of this reaction. So here we've got an acid, here we've got a weak base. So this reaction could actually happen and go back the other way. So usually for acid-base reactions, it's best not to draw this single-headed arrow showing that this will indefinitely go to form 100% product. So let me erase this here. And we need to think about which side the equilibrium balance will lie. So let's look at the acid that we formed. This has a proton available to donate, so it has a pKa value. This is a pretty strong acid. It's much stronger acid than ethanol, but it's actually a little bit weaker than hydrochloric acid. So the pKa value for the protonated ethanol is negative 2.4. So overall, this is a weaker acid, and this actually happens to be a weaker base. So things are more comfortable on this side. So with our equilibrium reaction, we can say that we're definitely going to favor the right side or the product side, but we're probably going to have a very small percent composition of these starting materials as well. Let's label the components of this reaction. So we have an acid. In this case, it was the hydrochloric acid that donated its proton. So that is the acid. And we have a base. In this case, it was the ethanol that used its electrons to attack and steal the hydrogen ion on the acid. And we have a conjugate acid. 
we protonated our base, we gave it an extra proton, which now it's capable of donating that proton, so we formed the conjugate acid there, and then we also have a conjugate base, and the conjugate base, which is our chloride anion. All right, let's look at a couple different functional groups. Let's look at a carboxylic acid functional group. Reacting with a dimethyl amine. So we've got our nitrogen with two methyl groups on it. We also have a hydrogen, and that has a lone pair. We've got a couple lone pairs on our oxygens here, and two more lone pairs on our oxygen there. So in this case, we have a carboxylic acid, and we have a secondary amine and these are going to interact to form a conjugate acid and a conjugate base. Now the question is which proton is more likely to be taken? So this has potential to donate its proton as well as this. So we need to look at the pKa values of these two for the carboxylic acid, acetic acid. The pKa value for this is 4.5 Seven six, and for a secondary amine, the pK value for amines in general is about thirty six. So based on this pK value being much lower than the pK value for the hydrogen on this secondary amine, it looks like this is the most acidic proton, which means that this lone pair on the nitrogen, this secondary amine, is going to be our base, and we are going to deprotonate or take the proton of our acid and then these electrons are going to go sit on the conjugate base that we formed. So first let's draw the conjugate base. We've got our deprotonated carboxylic acid we had two lone pairs of electrons. Now we have three. In this oxygen-hydrogen bond, there are two electrons. These electrons went to go sit on the oxygen. And now this oxygen has gained electrons. So we also have a negative charge on that oxygen. For our base, we've formed the conjugate acid of that. So nitrogen had two methyl groups. It still has two methyl groups. It had one hydrogen attached. That hydrogen is still there. And we use this lone pair of electrons to form a bond between this nitrogen and this hydrogen. All right, we use these electrons to form the bond between this nitrogen and this hydrogen. So we formed a fourth bond on the nitrogen. And now that nitrogen doesn't have any lone pairs. So we had one electron from that bond, one electron from that bond, one from that one. And so that's three and then four or five. Nitrogen was neutral here. So nitrogen has a positive charge. This is our acid. It had the lowest pKa value, which is why it acted as the acid. This is our base. It had a lone pair of electrons that was capable of taking a proton. This is our conjugate base. It was the acetic acid that lost its proton. And this is our conjugate acid. Now again, let's look at where equilibrium actually lies. Again, this arrow isn't the best way to represent what's happening in this reaction, although we are forming these products. We just need to double check to make sure that it is actually going to lie in this direction. For the pKa of our conjugate acid, a protonated amine has a pKa of 1.7. So in this case, this is a much weaker acid than the carboxylic acid. So in this case, equilibrium will again lie to the right, favoring the side of the products. So I'm going to draw this arrow a little bit larger, saying that equilibrium will lie to the right.